Man City have been charged with over 100 breaches of financial fair play. But with their trial being for whatever reason so far away, I'm going to speed things up a bit and see what would happen if they were found guilty. So with that being said, I've not only relegated Manchester City to League 2, I've not only released Man City's best players, I've also taken almost every single penny in their budget away from them, which has led to Pep Guardiola actually leaving the club, probably because he can't buy trophies anymore. But don't worry City fans, I know just the guy to replace him. That's right guys, I have taken on the gigantic role of being Manchester City's new manager to not only get them climbing the ladder of English football to get them back into the Premier League, but to crown them once again the best team in the world. So here is the starting 11 we've loaded into after I have completely destroyed the club and as you can see it's a completely different team than we're all used to. No Elin Haaland, no Jack Grealish, no Phil Foden, no Kevin De Bruyne. We have absolutely rinsed Manchester City's team for all it's worth. There's quite literally not a single player over 72 rated for goodness sake. We've got a team of silvers and bronzes for goodness sake. The only thing really going for us is how young this team is man because as you can see the average age is about 23. I mean Scott Carson's our oldest player at 37 for goodness sake. And as you can see we don't have unlimited amounts of money anymore. We've only got 3 million to spend in our first season in charge of this completely destroyed Manchester City team but there are a couple of rules with this. Whilst we're in League 2 we're restricted to a maximum of 3 million in our budget every season. Whilst we're in League 1, we're restricted to a maximum of 5 mil every season. Whilst we're in the Championship, it's a maximum of 7 million. But once we reach the Premier League with Man City, we've no longer got any restrictions on our budget anymore. And as you can see, 3 mil isn't going to get this team anywhere very quickly, is it? I mean, we've literally got one reserve. We can't even sell anyone, for goodness sake. And I've just checked the scouting system. The scouts have tailed off as well, man. We've literally got no scouts and I'm pretty certain when I go into it. Yep, yeah, there you go. We've got absolutely rubbish scouts to choose from and the best one we can't even afford. So that's that out the window. But then again, we may not need any scouts. We've got Shane Cameron in our youth academy. He's got pretty decent potential. He's 56 rated. Maybe he can take Scott Carson's place in the near future. But remember, we do have three mil in the budget to spend and I reckon we go for a centre-back in place of Burns and a CDM in place of this guy. I mean, they're both 61 rated. They are still young, which does mean that we can can loan them out. We're not just going to stick them on the bench to rot there, but I do feel like if we want to get promotion in our first season, this is what we've got to do. And I've began the transfer in it with an absolute bargain, guys. Nelson Abbey, who's not even 20 years old, he's 66 overall. And look at his stats already, man. I think this guy's going to be a beast in the near future. And for only £1 million, he's our first signing as the new Man City manager. As for the defensive midfielder, I found Charlton Athletics, George Dobson. He's 25. He's already 70 overall. I feel like this guy's going to be an absolute game changer for us this season. And just like that, for the grand total of £1 million, he's the latest addition to this new generation of Manchester City. And speaking of the new generation of Man City, I have loaned a couple of them out. This is purely because these guys simply won't get the game time they need to improve in the team, but hopefully elsewhere, that's exactly what will happen. But unfortunately, due to contract renewals, we've got less than hundred grand in our budget. That's our transfer window done for season one, ladies and gents. Now, financially, as you guys have just seen, there's nothing more that we can really do in the transfer window but tactics wise there's a lot we can do firstly as you guys have seen i've gone for the 3-5-1-1 formation and this may seem very uncharacteristic like of me to choose a formation like this but believe me to get the best out of this team this is the formation we've got to rock with as for the tactical vision this time i'm rocking the gig and pressing style of play obviously pep guardiola was mad on tiki taka style of play but he's up to the left because the money wasn't there this is goodwin's era of manchester city and let's be honest guys with the average age being less than 25 overall. I definitely feel like these guys have got the legs to run a gig and pressing tactical vision. I reckon this is what's going to get the best out of the team. But right now, we sorted the tactics out. We brought players into the team. We've loaned players out of the team, which does leave the team looking like this going into our very first season in this new generation Manchester City team. And honestly, guys, I feel like automatic promotion is definitely on the cards. I mean, yes, we've got a 62 rated centre back. We've got a 65 rated 37 year old goalkeeper in Carson, but even with that, I reckon we got enough quality in the team to definitely carry us to League One. And that's exactly what's happened. We are automatically promoted to League One, finishing first in the league by seven points, for goodness sake. I don't know how the team looks right now, but I'm guessing it's way better than the last time we saw it. But it can't be that good, because Southampton knocked us out in round three of the FA Cup. 
And Palace knocked us out in round two of the Carabao Cup, so domestically, even with Manchester City, we are still pants. But we've somehow won the Bristol Street Motors Trophy, beating Barnsley in the final to do it. Honestly, fair play, promotion in the Papa John's Trophy, get in. And bloody hell, guys, look at the state of this team going into League One, man. I'm not being funny, I bet some of these guys have improved by six or seven overall this year. And I'm not wrong, Callum Doyle's gone up by five, Tommy Doyle's gone up by five, Perone's gone up by five, that's just phenomenal, isn't it? But the stats are a bit weird to say the least. Our centre midfielder Tommy Doyle is our top goal scorer and top assist it with 19 goals and 18 assists outscoring all of our attackers for goodness sake. That's mad. But guys step one is complete. We've gone from League 2 to League 1 just like that pretty much. And let's be honest guys this team itself should absolutely wipe the floor with League 1 but there is a rule that I have purposely left out that's going to make our life in League 1 and for the remainder of this video a little bit more tricky. But before we find out what that rule is if you're enjoying the video so far make sure you leave it a big old thumbs up and smash that subscribe button we are literally less than 2,000 subscribers away from hitting 50,000 subscribers guys so if you could help me out achieving that goal that would be amazing so guys we're now into season two of man city and as you can see it's official we are now in league one but now it's time to try and get back to back promotions and try getting into the championship and as you guys know now they're in league one our budget's increased just a little bit we've got five million to spend but remember there is that rule that is definitely definitely going to shaft us, so let me explain what it is. Until we reach the Premier League, I have to release every single player who's higher rated than the league's current highest rated player who's playing for another team. So in our case, Ilias Chair and Reggie Cannon from QPR are the highest rated players in League One right now, and that does not bode well for our chances of back-to-back -back promotions this season. Because that means we've got to release the following players, Callum and Tommy Doyle, we've got to release Maximo Perone, James McAtee, and of course, Liam Delap, who's an exception exciting prospect as well you've got to be kidding me and that has left the team looking like this and let me tell you something guys we've only got rid of five players and it already looks a thousand times worse man that five million isn't going to get us very far this year i mean look at the team for goodness sake we literally do not have a single striker anymore that's something we've got to sort out straight away i think for now at least i'm not going to bring a better goalkeeper in because shane cameron is only 17 he's showing great potential i reckon we give this guy a shot once scott carson of eventually retires and maybe we'll put some money into this defense to bolster it up a bit i mean cameron's only 60 rated for goodness sake he's definitely going to need some help but guys we've only got five million to sort all these problems out and to be honest i don't think that's anywhere near enough and remember we can only buy players as higher rated as the league's overall highest rated players so in our case that's 74 rated reggie cannon and 74 rated Ilias chair so yeah we are a little bit screwed but first things first we need a striker and i can't think of anybody better than Rex and Paul Mullen. He's 29, he's 68 overall. This guy's always been a beast for me when I've used him in career mode, so it's a no-brainer. But I've just changed my mind about the formation I want to use. Instead of the 3-5-1-1, I want the 3-5-2 formation. And as you guys can see, this requires two strikers, and I feel like I know the perfect striker to partner up with Paul Mullen up top. That's right, guys. I'm going for Macaulay Langstaff from Notts County. He's 27, 67 overall. I know that the rating isn't exactly impressive, but him and Mullen up top will bang goals in left, right and centre. Mark my words on that. And for the combined total of 2.05 million, we've got our strikers for the foreseeable future at least. And that leaves us with 2 million to bolster our defence a bit. And I feel like I found the perfect centre-back. I'm going for QPR's Jimmy Dunn. He's 71 rated and he's 26 years old. So we won't grow mega amounts, which is exactly what we need until we get into the championship. And that concludes our business for season two. As for 1.8 million on the dot, he's our final final signing of this transfer window and that leaves the starting 11 looking like this going into our first and hopefully last season in league one and when you consider the fact we released five of our highest rated players at the beginning of this season i feel like we've recovered pretty damn well don't get me wrong i absolutely know that it doesn't look as good as it used to but i still do believe that we can get into the championship with this team man i definitely feel like the quality's there so season two is wrapped up and just look at some of the improvements in these players man it's absolutely ridiculous but at the same time, it's very damn worrying. Remember, guys, we've got to release the players in this team who are higher rated than the highest rated players who are playing for the other teams in this league. And at the start of this season, it was 74 rated. And if that's the case, we've got no wingers left at the end of this season, man. But thankfully, we do have a chance of promotion. We're in the playoffs alongside Rotherham, Peterborough, and Sheffield Wednesday. I am begging to God that we win the playoffs, man. I cannot release any more players. And it's a good start because we've battered Sheffield Wednesday 5-3 in the 
in the playoff semi-finals. We're playing Rotherham United in the final. So much rests on this, guys. It's Rotherham versus City at Wembley for a chance of promotion. And we've done it done in khaki. Oh, my God. Thank God for that. We're in the championship next year. And the high likelihood is we won't have to release any players. Get in. I've got to admit the irony, though. We got the last place in the playoffs and we ended up winning the entire damn thing, man. That's just pure poetry. But what isn't poetry is getting knocked out on round two of the FA Cup by Carlisle. And once again, we get knocked out by Southampton in the Carabao Cup. I swear they've got it in for us. And we've gone from winning the Bristol Street Motors Trophy last year to not even making it out of the group this year. I swear to God, simulating these seasons is so unpredictable domestically. But I couldn't care less, to be honest. This team is now a championship team. We've got two consecutive back-to-back -back promotions. Get in. And the stats this year look way better. Kaki with 31 goal contributions. Both our strikers gaining in the action as well. And just look at Alex Robertson. He's not only grown to 74 overall, he's got 17 assists from that camera. He proper stood up to the plate this season. But guys, step two is done. Last year, we won League Two to get to League One, and this year, we win the playoffs to get to the championship. And the best part is, not only is our budget gain increased to 7 million, we probably won't have to release any of our players because there's going to be some pretty high-rated players coming down from the Premier League. So here we are, guys, in Season 3, and it's official. Manchester City are now in the championship, but I'm hoping we're only in this league for one season. And I have just checked Leeds United's Nicolo Casali is the highest rated player in the championship at 82 rated. Thank God for that. We don't have to release any of our players this time. And as you guys know, we've got 7 mil in our budget this season because we're now in the championship. But the question is, where are we actually going to put that money? I don't really want to mess with Langstaff and Mullen because last year they both got quite a few goals, man. I want to give them a season in the championship to see what they can do. And let's be honest, if Langstaff and Mullen don't get the goals our wingers Oscar Bob and Kaki definitely will and we're not even taking into account what Robertson can bring to the table when he was our top assister last year I feel like I caught front with sound the only position to actually improve that makes sense to me is the goalkeeping role I mean Shane Cameron is a decent player he's 18 he's 66 overall and he's got potential to be special but let's be real for a second guys if we want to get back to back to back promotions and get to the Premier League in three seasons flat we definitely need a better keeper than a 66 rated one. So I feel like loaning Chain Cameron out and bringing in a much stronger goalkeeper for this season and next season is definitely the route to go down this year. And the beauty of this season is we've got 7 million to spend with free reign to spend it as well because there's no way in hell I'm finding a player higher than 82 rated who's worth 7 million. There's not a chance in how that's happening. However, I did find Ivan Pandor from Hull City. He's 25, 75 overall and granted he's not 82 rated but for 5.1 million he now plays plays for us. And that leaves us with only one mil in our budget. And to be honest, guys, I can't think of a single player with that amount of money that's worth actually bringing to the team. So I'm going to leave the transfer window there. And guys, with a better goalkeeper, this team is looking pretty damn good going into the championship. Obviously, our strikers definitely could be better, but I just can't do that to Langstaff and Mullen, man. They're legends in this channel. Now, thinking about it, guys, even with a better goalkeeper, I feel like promotion this year may not be attainable. We may make the play Playoffs, but I feel like the overall quality of this team just isn't there yet to get into the Premier League. But you know what? I could be very wrong in saying that. And guys, I was wrong in saying that we're in the playoffs alongside Nottingham Forest, Luton Town and Watford. There is still a chance that we could get promotion this year. And it's looking good, guys. We've just beaten Luton Town in the semis. We're playing Nottingham Forest in the final. We've just beaten Watford 5-1. Jesus Christ. 5-0? Really? Xerxy legit banged in four goals against this. I mean, I can't even knock that, guys. They banged in 10 goals in the span of three games. Fair play to them. And to be fair, they did finish above us and they only missed out on promotion by three points. So I'd say that is quite justified. But this time we made it to round four of the FA Cup only to get knocked out by the bloody bottle jobs. And we got knocked out on round one of the Carabao Cup. Bristol Rovers knocked us out on penalties. Bristol Rovers. And when you look at the team, guys, there has been quite a lot of improvement this year. I absolutely feel like that we've got to get promotion next year, even though we failed to do it this time. As for the stats, I mean, Langstaff is leading the show with 25 goal contributions in 52 games, and our right winger, Kaki, gained 
52 goal contributions in 51 games. Fair play to him. We did come close, didn't we, guys? But ultimately, Nottingham Forest didn't just beat us in the playoff final. They annihilated us. And if a team like Forest is capable of doing that against us, what's a team like United or Liverpool going to do against us? But we do have another 7 million to spend next year. And I do feel like this time we've got to be quite ruthless with where we actually put that money. So we are now into season four with Manchester City. And I've just been checking who the highest rated player is in the championship just to make sure I'm not breaking any rules. And then I found Liam Delap, who's somehow playing for a Norwich City team who got relegated last year. I've got so many questions for FC24, man. How does he end up at Norwich? The good news is that we've got 7 million to spend this year and pretty much free reign to spend it on whoever we want within that budget. And I feel like I know just where to put that money. I want to replace Paul Mullen in that striker role. Last year, I feel like the championship was way too much for him. Langstaff did pull on some pretty big numbers, but Mullen just wasn't at the races. So this year, I want a better striker. As for the rest of the team, I'm very content to leave it alone, man, because I reckon once we get a striker in place of Mullen, we'll definitely get promotion this year. And I think I found the striker I want, guys. Ali Sims from Coventry City. He's 25, 75 overall. He's not the best striker in the world, but he's definitely better than Paul Mullen. And just like that, guys, for 5.7 million on the dot, he is now a Manchester City player, but he's well and truly broke our bank. We've got less than £20 in our budget. It's safe to say our transfer window is done. But this is how the team looks going into our fourth season in charge of City and our second and hopefully last season in the championship. It's slowly starting to come together now. We've got an 83 rated Bob, 79 rated Kaka. We've got decent strikers, decent cam. I reckon this year is our year to get back in the prem. And I was absolutely bang on. We are second in the championship, meaning we are automatically promoted back into the prem. But let me tell you, it was close at the end. Borough finished on 97. Now ourselves and Norwich finished on 96. Even with Lee and Delap, they still couldn't beat us to automatic promotion. Get in. And we've also made the FA Cup final. Now, granted, we did lose to Fulham, but this is the second domestic final we've made since this video began. We aren't even in the Premier League yet. But we only made it to round two of the Carabao Cup. How can you do so well in one area and then flop so badly in the other? But I honestly couldn't care less, guys. Look at the team, man. I genuinely feel like we're ready for the Premier League now. And the stats would definitely agree. Oscar Bob with 29 goal contributions. Kaki with 29 goal contributions. Also 21 for Langstaff and 13 for Alice Sims. Great season. And with us now being promoted to the Premier League, the shackles are finally off. We've got no limitations on our budget and we can bring in whoever we want now. And that means only one thing. It's only going to be a matter of time before Manchester City are once again on top of English football and once again eventually the best team in the world. So it is now season 5 into this video with Man City and it's finally official. We are now back in the Premier League with the big boys where Manchester City belong. And the good news just keeps on coming. We've got 95 million in our first season back in the Prem. I reckon we're going to do some serious damage this year, you know. But we still got to spend it pretty wisely. I mean, there's a lot of areas in this pitch that still need improving, even though we do have quite a few strengths in the team now. One part of the pitch I'm leaving alone is our strikers, Langstaff and Sims. They did pretty well last season in the Championship. I'm quite interested to see how they handle the toughest league in the world. But I definitely want to improve our defence a little bit more and maybe bring in a stronger goalkeeper than Pandor. But then again, Shane Cameron is 20 years old, 77 overall and is an exciting prospect. Maybe I'll own Pandor out and give Cameron the shot in the starting 11 this year to see what he can do. And by doing this we can definitely bolster our defence and also bring in a midfielder for either Fiorini or Dobson. And with us financially not being restricted anymore and no longer being restricted on who we can bring in, I definitely feel like if we get our signings right, we can get a top 10 finish in our first season back in the prep. And we are definitely starting with a bang. Luke Bardet from Crystal Palace. He's 27, 84 rated, 6 foot 3. He's going to be perfect, especially in a 3 at the back formation. And joining him is going to be Saul Coco from Nottingham Forest. He's 28, 83 overall. And just look at his stats. 85 pace, 82 defending and physicality. Him in that 3 at the back formation are a match made in heaven. And for the total sum of £70.1 million, pounds, we've signed both of these players on four-year deals and that leaves us with 17 million our budget and we may just be able to bring in a midfielder for that and you know what i feel like having a reunion guys i want tommy doyle to come back to city he's 25 81 overall his market value is pretty high but i reckon we may just be able to pull this off so i'm gonna offer 14 million alongside nelson abbey in this deal that comes to around 29 million so hopefully these guys go for it they don't go for it they want philippe stevenich and only 2.75 million
million. Okay, that actually works for me. And there he is, guys, in the Manchester City jersey once again. Welcome home, Tommy Doyle. And that is our transfer window done, guys. We've got nine mil in the budget, for goodness sake. I can't think of a single player I can bring in for that kind of money that's actually going to be worthwhile. And just look at the team, guys. This is how we lose going into our first season back in the Prem. And honestly, I reckon we're going to be a dark horse this year. We have a very exciting prospect in goal. Our back three is absolutely fine. Our midfield's good. Our strikers are pretty decent as well. I genuinely feel like a top 10 finishes on the cards this year. Okay, I may have been a little bit wrong in my judgment there. We are 12th in the league. We're not quite top 10, but considering where we've come from to where we are now, this is fantastic. But we did get knocked out in round three of the FA Cup. And we got knocked out in round four by Wolves in the Carabao Cup. So domestically, we are still pretty pants. But let me tell you what isn't pants. Our team, just take a look at it, man. Oh my days, I did not expect this to happen. Look at Cameron, man. He is the real deal. I don't even care. But judging by the stats, there is work to be done next year. Kakai has got 30 goal contributions in 39 games. Sims has got 16 and 39, 14 and 10 for Bob, and 4 and 4 for Langstaff. Yeah, we're going to have to be pretty ruthless next year. But let's just brush that aside for a sec. We got a mid-table finish in our first season back in the Prem when five seasons ago, Manchester City were completely and utterly destroyed. And now look at the team, man. I think if that budget is once again on our side and we can make the right signings, we can go from 12th in the league to 6th or 5th and maybe even top 4. And the budget is definitely on our side, guys. 95 mil to spend in season 6 and that is more than enough to bring in the players I want. Now, I did say last year we needed to be ruthless in this transfer window. That's why I'm bringing in better strikers for Alice Sims and Langstaff. Last year, they didn't really perform all that well, especially Langstaff. And if we are to once again elevate Man City to the next level, we definitely need deadly strikers in front of goal. Now, my first thought was obviously Liam Delap, and he's still somehow playing for Norwich, but his market value is well over 100 million. And remember, guys, we've only got 95 mil, and we need more than one striker up top, remember. But don't worry, I do have a plan B. And I mean, Adley is step one of plan B. He's 28 years old, 84 overall, and he's not worth all that much in comparison to Delap. He's definitely affordable. And his striker pot up top's going to be Maximilian Bayer from Wolves. He's 25, 84 rated, and the fact that he plays for Wolves means he's got Premier League experience, and that is exactly what we need up top. And for the combined total of £79.5 million, pounds, we've got a brand new striker partnership. And just look at the team now, guys. It's absolutely brilliant, but we do still have a weakness in that midfield to sort out. But with £6 million in our budget, we can't exactly sign anybody on a transfer fee. So I went into the free agents to have a look, see who was there, and you will never believe who I found. Matthias Nunes is a free agent, ladies and gentlemen. He's 29, 84 overall. He's got some fantastic stats as well. How will this guy? hasn't been snapped up by a club yet I'll never know but guess what guys that's about to change because for the grand total amount of absolutely nothing we have brought Matthias Nunes back home to Manchester City and that concludes our transfer window for season six and that leaves the team looking like this going into the second season in the Prem and honestly guys I definitely feel like European football's around the corner for us obviously Cameron is the weakest link in the team but I'm willing to put money on the fact that by the end of this season he's at least 83 or 80 84 rated. But aside from him, there is literally nobody below 84 rated in this team, man. I'm telling you now, top four, at least top six is on the cards this season. And once again, guys, my judgment was slightly off. We didn't get top six or top four. We instead won the Premier League by 11 points, for God's sake. We have made Manchester City once again the best team in England. But we couldn't get past Wolves in round three of the FA Cup. Go bloody figure. And Cardiff knocked us out in round three of the Carabao Cup. So whilst we were the best team in in England, we are still absolutely diabolical domestically. But when you take a look at the team, guys, I'm really not surprised we've won the Prem this year. We have built a monstrosity with Manchester City. And what did I tell you guys about our goalkeeper from 81 overall to 84 rated by the end of this season? I absolutely called it. And the stats look pretty damn good as well. 28 and 4 for Adley, 14 and 8 for Kaki, 38 and 8 for Bob, 5 and 4 for Nunes, Tommy Dole getting 10 assists as well. But Maximilian Baez had a shot of four goal contributions in 18 games. Surely to God, he's had to be injured at some point, man. There's no way he's done that badly. But guys, we've completed step two of this video. We've not only got them back into the Premier League, we've once again crowned them the best team in England. But now it's time to turn our attention to the Champions League because once we've won this competition, our job
job is done because by then we'll have made Manchester City once again the best team in the world. And guys, we have just arrived in season seven with our highest budget yet of just over 210 million. That is just phenomenal. And that's put me in a bit of a pickle because this starting 11 really doesn't need any meddling. I feel like we put that money onto the bench. As you can see, guys, the quality on the bench is nowhere near as good as it is in the starting 11. And with us being in the Champions League now, we've got to sort that out. The good news is though, we've got over 200 million in our budget, as you guys know. So sorting this out isn't exactly going to be difficult. Now, I've started the window by bringing in Romanian centre-back Radu Dragus, and he's 27, 82 rated, and he's absolutely rapid, which makes him perfect for a three at the back formation. And for only 27 million, he's our first signing of season seven. I'm also bringing Fran Baltran over to Manchester City for squad depth, and that midfield is 30 years old, 83 overall, and because his contract was running out, he only cost us 24 million to sign on a three-year contract. As for the backup winger, I'm going for Matteo Cancellieri from Lazio. He's 26, 83 overall, and as you guys can see, his contract's running out. We'll get a much cheaper deal because of that. As for our backup attacking midfielder, I'm going big and bold. I'm going for Facundo Farias from Valencia. He's 26 years old, 85 overall. We're going to splash big on this guy, but it'll definitely be worth it. And for the combined total of £91.1 million, pounds, we've signed both of these players on permanent deals to Manchester City, and that leaves us with over 50 50 million still in our budget, but I feel like I'm going to cut the transfer window there. Just because you've gotten the money doesn't mean you have to spend it. I mean, just look at the bench now, for goodness sake. I reckon if anything happened to our starting 11 players in these positions, these guys could definitely step up to the plate. But with that being said, this is how the team is lined up going into Season 7 with Manchester City in our first season back in the Champions League with them. And speaking of the Champions League, we're in a pretty tough group. Bayern Munich, RB Salzburg and Legia Warsawa. We're in all honesty guys i feel like this team is capable of winning everything this year that includes the premier league fa cup carabao cup community shield and of course the champions league so let's see if i'm right while i'm wrong we lost the premier league title to the bottle jobs exactly the same wins draws and losses the only difference was four goals Four goals lost us the title, man. I'm actually living at this. I cannot believe we bottled it to the bottle jobs. But we did win the Community Shield, so that is a small consolation. But in round four of the FA Cup, Newport knocked us out. Bloody Newport. But we did make the Carabao Cup semi-finals, losing 4-3 to Newcastle Spurs in the finals. While they aren't better, a bloody won this one as well. Bruh. Newcastle United, you had one job. One job. I've got to be honest, this isn't filling me with confidence about how we've done in the Champions League. But surprisingly, we've topped Group A, even beating Bayern Munich to that spot, and we go to the round of 16. And we've done the exact same to Inter Milan in the quarters, and all be Leipzig have not Spurs out. Oh, that is absolutely fantastic. That is beautiful. We could be playing Liverpool, RB Leipzig, or Atletico. Out of those three teams, I'm not going to lie, I really don't know who I prefer to play against. But we faced Atletico, and we beat them 2-1 on aggregate we are in the champions league final and we are facing rb leipzig i almost don't want to try and beat them man they knocked out the bottle jobs for that they deserve to win the champions league as far as i'm concerned but looking at our stats i'd say we've got a shout for it too 32 and 5 for adley 24 and 15 for khaki 17 and 16 for oscar bob i mean fair play to them guys fair play and as we head into the champions league final this is the starting 11 we are rocking with and i'm so damn happy with it man We've actually been able to keep quite a few OG since season one. We've got Cameron in the team. We've got Mbete. We've got Doyle back in the team. Robertson, Oscar, Bob, and of course, our right winger, Kake. By the way, I'm pretty certain this entire video, I've got his name pronunciation wrong, but I'm sure by now you'll have let me know in the comments. And up to this point, we've won a lot of trophies with this new generation Man City team. The League 2 title, the Bristol Street Motors trophy, the League 1 playoffs, the FA Community Shield, and of course, the Premier League. But now we have the chance to make Manchester City once again the best team in the world. All we have to do is get past RB Leipzig to do it. Here come Leipzig, first attack of the game. Brian Brobby's on the ball. He's still on the ball. I don't know why we're not tackling him. Great bit of defending there, though. Good block. Kake is now on the ball, though. Let's try to run the channel. Let's cut inside. Nope. Oh, my days. Have you seen the size of the defender he went up against? Jeez, he's twice the size of him. Nunes is on the ball, though. We're going to spot that run from Kake. Look at that. Cut inside. 
Finesse shot. Oh, come on, man. Go top left. Bin's not straight down his throat. We've got Kake on the right hand side of the pitch now, though. Heel chop inside. Oh, that's beautiful. Baye, can we get a goal? That is an amazing Travala shot. Maximilian Baye puts us 1 0 up inside 20 minutes. Kake picks it up on the right hand side, finds Baye outside the box. Travala shot, not it. Well, actually, the keeper should be saving that, but it's still a bloody good goal. Here come Leipzig on the ball, on the attack in our half. Nope. Come on. Oh, what a freaking bit of defending from Coco, man. Fair play. I've got to say, for the most part, I am actually really enjoying this sweet the back formation. Look at that, man. Oscar Bob is away. He's on his left foot. He's found Maximilian by a turn that. Right foot shot. Oh, great defending. I've got to admit, I originally thought the 4-2-3-1 narrow was the best formation on this game, but I might be wrong. The 3-5-2 is definitely up there. Here come Leipzig. This is not good. What a bit of defending that is. Oh, my God. Christ. Here they come early in the second half with Brian Brobby. Look at that from Bardi. Oh, he hasn't got to him in time. Can we get a foot in? I don't like this. Orby Leipzig are playing really nope. good football. Great save from Cameron. Good stuff, lad. Here come Leipzig once again. Moise Keane is trying to find Brian Brobby and he's found him. But look at that from Betty, man. What a frigging tackle. Another OG from season one. Point a right shifting in the fight. Look at him again. But here comes Oscar Bob on the left-hand side of the pitch. Yet another OG from season one. What can he do? He's going to cut inside heel chop that is a beautiful bit of play come on that's got to be 2-0 and it is we have taken a 2-0 lead on the 60 minute mark what a bit of play that was Adley's on the ball we found Oscar Bob once again he's dying to get a goal look at him and he's finally got his goal in the Champions League final 3-0 after 80 minutes RB Leipzig have got absolutely no chance of getting back in this game now Oh, okay, that just happened. I did not expect that to happen. What? I mean, fair play. They got a consolation goal. It's only going to win them the game, but at least they got one in the final. Here come Arby Leipzig once again. They're looking for a second, to be fair, but they're not going to get it. Oh, what a bit of bloody football from Kaki, man. He's on his left foot. He's going to put us 4-1 up. Well, he's going to try to. What the hell happened there? But it doesn't matter. We have just made Manchester City the best team in the world once again. From absolute rags to riches, from League 2 from having their entire team taken away from them from financially being in ruins to winning the Premier League and once again winning the Champions League. That took a while as well. Seven seasons in total. We went through trials and tribulations with this Man City team at one point releasing five of our highest rated plays but you know what guys in the end we bloody did it. But that is the end of this video guys. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you did just click right here to watch another one.